Wow, God's so good, amen? God's great. His presence, His faithfulness, it's awesome. Today we're going to continue. Uh, last week we started talking about uh, showing love to each other, showing love to people who are needy, showing love, helping, giving, sacrificing, uh, using our talents, using our resources to be a blessing to people. And really, that's how God wants us to live, to be people who are not just self-focused, just thinking about ourselves and our own lives, but always looking to what we can do and what we can give to others. Someone once said, life is not about what we get, but it's about what we give. And that ought to be our lives as Christians. What can I give? What can I, how can I use what I have to be a blessing to other people around me? And we've, we've been looking at this, the, the story, the, the parable of Jesus that he said in, in Luke chapter 10. And it's the story of the Good Samaritan. And I'm just going to go through and read that again because it's going to be, uh, I'm going to refer to it here in just uh, a little bit. Luke 10, verses 25 to 37. <clears throat> it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to Jesus, or sorry, and Jesus said to the lawyer, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? But then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. They stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, departed, and left him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down the road. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. When he saw him, he had compassion. So we have three guys, the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. The priest came, saw, and passed by on the other side. The Levite came, saw, and passed by on the other side. But the Samaritan came and saw, and he had compassion. The compassion was the part that, that transformed his interaction or began his help began his actions to help this guy we see the priest didn't have compassion the levite didn't have compassion but they both came and they both saw but the samaritan came and saw and he had compassion as we go about our lives we're going to come across people you know it says about the priest he says he just happened to be going down that same road he came and saw. He was just on his daily journey or daily whatever he did, and he just happened to be coming down that road, but he came and saw. The Levite, the same thing. He came and saw. And in our lives, there's going to be stuff that happens as we walk down the road. But we need to make sure that we're not like the priest and the Levite who just see and pass by, see and pass by. It's easy to see, but... It's the compassion that the Samaritan had that made all the difference. What does it mean to have compassion? Compassion means a yearning or a deep feeling in the depths of yourself. It's not something where it's, okay, it's just a nice thought. I, I should do something for this person or it's the right thing to do. No, compassion thinks this guy needs help. This person needs help. It's identifying. It's putting yourself 
in that person's shoes. Oh, this guy is suffering. What can I do to help? How can I help them? What can I do? It's that compassion is when we see some, something or we see a situation or we see a person and we feel the way that they feel. We think the way that they think and we see somebody's hurting. I can help them. Oh, that pain that they're going through. I know what that's like. That's compassion. We sympathize or we empathize with someone. And when we do, it's taking the time to think through what that person is going through. If you're in a hurry, you're going to be like the priest and the Levite. <clears throat> You'll be like the priest and the Levite, who maybe they were thinking about, oh, I got to get to Jericho before the sun goes down. Or I got to get here, or I, I have to make sure that I, I don't make myself unclean so I can continue to do my duties that I have to do. Maybe they were thinking about all that stuff. And they didn't have compassion because they were just thinking about their own situation. A person with compassion sees, but they see and they take time to think, oh, he's really suffering. How can I help him? How can I make a difference in their lives? It doesn't rush or pass by people. Angie and I, this week, we were, at the end of last week, we were looking at, we were watching some videos about um, the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett for the Supreme Court back in the United States. And there, it, she has to go through this big three-day uh, three long uh, nomination process where people ask her lots of questions and she's nominated by President Trump to be in one of the highest courts or the highest court in all of the United States. And so people ask her questions. What does she think about this? What does she think about that? <clears throat> But then they also have uh, testimonies from other people as well. And one of the ones that Angie and I watched uh, was from a lady. All these videos are available on YouTube. Uh, but it was from a lady named Laura Wolk. And Laura Wolk is a blind clerk in the Supreme Court of the United States. A clerk is someone who, you know, they take the notes of all of the happenings, all the things that happen uh, in the courtroom. But this girl, this lady, is uh, she's completely blind, 100% blind. And she tells her story of when she was a student of Amy Coney Barrett. And as she is giving her testimony on the video, you can see she's using a machine. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a little keyboard, and it's connected to a... Um, it's connected to a computer, and she uses it reading in Braille, and she's got her whole speech that she wants to say on this machine, and she's going through, and she's uh, reading the machine as, as she's saying all of these things. Um, and she tells a story about the first time she was in Amy Coney Barrett's uh, class, and she was the, at the school promised Laura that she would be able to have all of the technology that she needed in order to stay up with the class. You know, the rest of the class, they can read and write and take notes or type on the computer. But for her, it was different. She needed special computers to be able to do the stuff that she needed to do, to be able to study, to be able to take notes in order to continue to progress in the class. But anyways, to make a long story short, the school didn't have these things. and. At the end of the class, Amy Coney Barrett came and, 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 and talked to Laura. And she said, you know, what's, what's the problem? How can I help? What can we do? And Laura just kind of opened up and said, man, I need all of these things. The, the school promised that I would have this and that, the computer that I would need, and all these kind of things. <clears throat> she was just very vulnerable. And uh, it's interesting in the... In the in the video that they show as she's telling the story, you can really see her, how emotional she is uh, about it, how, as she remembers what Amy did for her. And the one thing that Amy said to her as she was telling the story is that Amy said to her, she said, this is no longer your problem. This is my problem. This is no longer your problem, but this is my problem. And that's what compassion does. 
Compassion says, I'm going to take this problem upon myself. I'm going to take your problem, and now it's my problem. You're suffering, you're hurting, but I can do something about it. I'm going to take that problem and make it my problem. And this is what Amy Coney Barrett did for her. She managed to get her all the technology she needed. And now, Laura Wolk is a clerk in the highest courtroom in the United States of America. And now she's helping Amy Coney Barrett become a judge in that same courtroom. And it's a really cool story, but I love that phrase that she said, this is no longer your problem, but this is my problem. And that's what compassion does. It sees something and says, I'm going to make this my problem. And as it is my problem, I'm going to help and fix that problem for you. I'm going to do what I can. That's what the Samaritan did. He went and he used his resources. He said, look, he said, I have all of these things and I'm going to make this problem my problem. I'm going to help you. And so he went to him. He took time. He used his resource of time. He bandaged his wounds. He used the tools that he had. He says they poured oil and wine on his wounds. And in those days, that was kind of like medicine they, they would put on there to help the healing process, to bring comfort and all that. Um, he set him up on his own animal. So he used his own tools that he had. He used his belongings. Now, the Samaritan was probably riding, riding that donkey. <clears throat> and so now he would have to be the one to walk as he put the, uh, the beat-up man up on his own donkey. So now it's going to cost him physically as well. He's going to have to use his, his, his muscles, and he's going to have to walk, and it's going to cost him for taking care of this man. And he also used his, his finances. He said, when he got to the inn, he said, I'm going to give you this money two days wages and he said to the innkeeper he said okay you take this money and help this man whatever he needs you give it to him and I'm gonna come back I'm gonna come back and check on him and anything else that he needs you take care of it you take care of his needs and I'll pay you back when I get back and so he followed up on him as well and so he used the things that he had because he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He, he felt something deep in his soul that said, I can help this guy. I can make a difference. I'll make his problems my problems, and I'm going to help to fix these problems. Using our resources is something that's required when we, when we have compassion. Action requires our resources. The priest, the Levite, they didn't have to use any of their resources. They just saw and they passed by. But having compassion, you know, I think about Jesus. He saw the multitudes and he said, no, I don't want to send them away. He's, he used his, another time he had compassion on the multitudes and he healed all who were sick. He needed to sleep. He was tired. But he said, no, I have compassion on these people. I'm going to use what I have and help their problems. So how do we become a person who has compassion and acts? Number one, I think we need to pray for more compassion. You know, it's so easy. This world makes us turn inwards. Oh, we need this. We need that to be happy. We need that to be happy. Actually, it's the people who help other people, who give the most, who are the most happy. The world's got it all backwards. The world's get, 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 then you'll be happy. But God's economy, it's give, 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 and then you'll be happy. Happiness doesn't come from trying to fulfill it. Happiness comes when we help others and give to others. So ask God to fill you with compassion. Number two, repent of selfishness. They kind of go together. Repent of our selfish ways. It doesn't mean we don't care for ourselves or we don't look out for ourselves and we don't provide for ourselves, but a lot of times that can turn to selfishness. And so we got to repent of that. Pray for people. You know, 
once we start praying for people, even our enemies, we start to have more compassion for them. Because prayer shifts our perspective. We start to see them the way that God sees them. And we say, okay, this is what God thinks. Oh, they're hurting. They're having, they have a difficult life, even when they're, they're your enemies or they you know, do wrong stuff towards you. No, they're still they're hurting. They're, they're people in need. And we can have compassion on those people as well. Move through life with less hurry. Take time. Take time in your daily life just to, you know, rather than walking through the mall on our phone, let's put the phone away in our pocket and just kind of observe as we see different people around us as you're walking down the street, you know. Oh, that man, it looks like he's having a difficult time. Maybe I can help him. Or that beggar on the side of the street, they're having a rough day. Okay, maybe I can help them out, buy them a meal, spend some time with them, talk with them. Don't be in so much of a hurry that you miss and you end up passing by like the priest and the Levite did. Think about other people's needs and try to empathize or try to sympathize, understand how they feel. How does that person feel? It looks like they're probably feeling rejection or abandonment or pain or something along those lines. And then you can start to even talk to people and say, okay, look, you know, how are you doing? How's your day going? And you can start to show compassion to people. The final thing is, if you want to change into a person who has compassion, I would encourage you to begin by acting. Acting when you see people with needs around you. Maybe you're not so filled with compassion or you don't have the, oh, uh, this amazing, overwhelming feeling of compassion. But I, I believe that if you act, you begin by acting and meeting people's needs, that compassion will start to flow out of you. And as you meet one need, those, that heart of compassion will begin to bubble up and, 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 and come out from you. Jesus said, go and do likewise. At the end of it, you know, after it says all of the things that the, that the Good Samaritan did, Jesus said, go and do likewise. He didn't say, go and feel likewise, or go and think likewise. He said, go and do. Go and do likewise. So if we want to be people of compassion, start by acting. Pray, ask God for compassion, yeah. But start by acting and say, God, I'm going to do this in faith, and I believe that that compassion is going to follow. And it will. And it will. You act, and that compassion definitely will follow. Let's all stand up together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the examples that we see in the Bible. We thank you for the examples of good people who live lives of compassion, who live lives unselfishly. And God, we ask that you would work within us. God, I pray that you would forgive us for the times that we have rushed past people. God, fill us with compassion. And this week, God, I pray that you would reveal to us, that you would show us people as we walk through our lives, as we walk through our days, show us those people. Help our eyes to see those people that need help, that we can say to them, I'm going to make this problem my problem. And give us hearts that display your love, that display your kindness and generosity, and make us people that are more like you. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love for us. But your love does not stop with us. Your love extends to all those other people around us. Make us more like you, God. Make us more like you, who was moved with compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.